grace, mercy, and peace be yours from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The text of our sermon this morning is recorded in the Gospel according to St. Mark, the Gospel from which most of our third lessons are taken this year. This morning we read in the first chapter, beginning of verse 4. And so John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him. Confessing their sins, they were baptized by him in the Jordan River. John wore clothing made of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. And this was his message. After me comes the one more powerful than I the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. At that time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. Just as Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven. You are my Son, whom I love. With you I am well pleased. This is God's Word. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who under his baptism was numbered with us sinners. How in the world did those magi know at which house they would find the newborn king? St. Matthew gives us the answer. They went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. God had provided these Gentiles with a faithful witness to reveal Jesus to them. About three decades later, the inhabitants of the countryside of Judea and the population of the city of Jerusalem went out to the river Jordan where John, dressed in these clothes and eating these particular foods, was baptizing. John was not only baptizing with a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, John also preached. He preached judgment has come in the revelation of the promised Messiah. Some wondered if perhaps John was the Messiah. He explained to them and showed them that certainly he was not. The one more powerful was coming. The table is set. Here is the one preparing the way. Here is a crowd of sinners who needs the way. And soon to be revealed is the Savior who later would say, I am the way and the truth and the life. How would these sinners, how do us sinners, how do other sinners, like the Magi, find their newborn king? How do they find Jesus? God has given two this time, two faithful witnesses that reveal Jesus to the world. So this morning on the basis of St. Mark's words, we are going to see that at that time, the Father 
made Jesus known. And he did that with two witnesses. First of all, through the testimony of John the Baptist and through his own voice from heaven. Through the testimony of John the Baptist, the Father made Jesus known. In the verses just before our text, St. Mark quotes Isaiah 40. And he begins that quote with these little words, as it is written. And then he quotes what Isaiah said about the coming one who would prepare the way for Jesus, the prophecy of John the Baptist. Now do you see how important those other three little words, or those other two little words are to begin our text? And so John appeared in the wilderness. Those words come right after that prophecy. God said he was going to send the way preparer, and so John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness. God was in control of the time and the place where he would send that one who would prepare the way, who would give a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, who would preach the coming judgment in the revelation of the Messiah. See how important all the inspired words of the Scripture are? Even little phrases like, as it is written, and so, even those little phrases reveal the mind and plan of God for your salvation and for mine. It was God's purpose to reveal to the lost world that Jesus of Nazareth is the anointed one. He is God's chosen one as the Messiah, our King, and our Redeemer. In the fullness of his time, through John the Baptist, at that time, the Father made Jesus known. Think about that. Thousands of years of promises had come to fruition that day by the Jordan. The three other gospel writers, Jesus' baptism is recorded by all four of the evangelists. The other three gospel writers flesh out what St. Mark wrote about Jesus. They said that John pointed to Jesus and said, Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Pointing Jesus as the fulfillment of all those Old Testament Passover lambs. John not only said that one more powerful than I is going to come, but he also called the coming one the one who was before me, that this Messiah was not only all-powerful, but he is also eternal, that he is the eternal Son of God. God, through John, called the people to repentance and confession as they described Jesus as the one who would bring judgment on the world against sin and who would bring the forgiveness for all those sins. But what does that mean for us? Well, it means that John's witness is true. It means that what St. Mark and the other gospel writers have recorded is reliable. At that time, at Jesus' baptism, the Father made Jesus known. He made him known as his all-powerful eternal son. He made him known as the one whose way John the Baptist would prepare. He would be the one 
in whom those sinners would find the way of forgiveness and the way to heaven. John's testimony is true and therefore was reliable for their faith and is reliable for ours. How do we know that Jesus is my Savior? We have the testimony of the one whom God called, the one whom God placed at the River Jordan, the one who preached repentance and forgiveness, declaring to us that Jesus is my Savior. God could have left it at that. That would have been enough for us. That would have been enough for for everybody. But God, in His grace, repeats that message. Often repeats His message over and over again. And this time, at that time, as the Father reveals Jesus, His Son, and makes Jesus known, He does it also through His own voice. Here's another one of those little small three-word phrases. At that time, at God's time, when God was ready, when the world was ready, when all those promises now would be fulfilled, at that time, the Father made Jesus known by himself speaking audibly so that Jesus would hear that voice and so that all the others who were there would hear that voice too. At that time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. It was God's time for Jesus to begin his public ministry. It was time for him to be revealed, to begin his public work as our Savior. And he did that by placing himself under baptism. John's baptism is our baptism. It is a baptism that works repentance. It is a baptism that gives the forgiveness of sins because it is the gospel connected to simple water. John was a little bit befuddled, to say the least, when Jesus came to him and said, Baptize me. And remember what John said? He said, Lord, I should be baptized by you. You shouldn't be baptized by me. And Jesus said, yes, we need to do this to fulfill all righteousness. Jesus didn't need to be baptized because he's a sinner, like we need to be baptized because we're sinners. But Jesus placed himself as a sinner under our baptism. It's what we sang in our sermon hymn. He was numbered, counted, became one of us under holy baptism, bearing our sins. It was part of his active obedience, part of the righteousness that he was earning for us. And so we are assured that in the same baptism that we go under, that we have that forgiveness that he placed himself under in baptism, bearing our sins. He became one of us. He was numbered and counted among all the sinners of the world. This was the baptism that John was administering. It is the baptism that we and our children enjoy today. A baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. At his baptism, Jesus began his public ministry. Jesus began that not only as true God, but also as true man. He needed God's blessing. He needed God's strength. He needed power for that work. The Father wanted people to know that when Jesus preached, 
He was preaching his word. The Father wanted people to know that when Jesus taught, he was teaching words that his heavenly Father had given him. The Father wanted people to know that when Jesus did miracles to reveal himself as the Savior, that in fact he is the Savior who was revealing himself. And so the Father anointed his Son, not with oil, like the Old Testament prophets, priests, and kings, but with the Holy Spirit, with his blessing, and with power, giving him as true man that strength and that power and that ability as God and man to go out and do the work that he had been called to do. To be our perfect prophet, to preach God's word. To be our perfect priest, to offer the sacrifice and be the sacrifice for sin. To be our perfect king, to rule the universe and rule our hearts through faith. And so to strengthen Jesus and to strengthen the knowledge of the crowd, the Father said out loud from heaven, You are my son. In you, I am well pleased. The Father identified Jesus not only as the eternal Son of God, but the one in whom the Father was pleased. And why was the Father pleased with his Son? Because he knew that his Son would carry out the work. He knew that his Son had willingly taken on this flesh, had taken on this mission of redeeming you and me from our sins, from death, and from the power of the devil. Here already, we have God stating that this is going to happen. I'm well pleased with my son because I know that he's going to do what he came to do. And we hear that already in those three little words at that time. In order to do that, Jesus up in Nazareth in Galilee... At that time, Jesus left Nazareth, came to Judea, and was baptized by Jordan, by John in the Jordan River. This set the tone for his whole life and even for his death. Later in the Gospels, we read that at that time, Jesus set his face to go to Jerusalem to suffer and to die on the cross. At God's time, the Son came to be baptized to begin his ministry. At God's time, he came back to Jerusalem to suffer and to die on the cross to pay for our sins. We have no one less than our Heavenly Father assuring us that Jesus is the Christ, that he was holy for us, that he died for us on the cross. The Father chose him and gave him his spirit and gave him all power to do his work. And so, because God is not a man who should lie, we know that God's word is true. We know that Jesus is the Messiah. We know that Jesus is the Savior. How did the Magi know where to go in faith and leave their gifts in worship. God gave them a faithful witness that made Jesus known to them. How do you and I know where as sinners to go to find our Savior? How do we know where to go in faith? How do we know where to go to lay down our gifts of love at his feet. God has given us faithful witnesses who have made Jesus known to us. Those witnesses are John the Baptist and the Heavenly Father himself. And so we add our voices to John's. We add our voices to the Heavenly Father's. As we say to the world around us, 
As we say to those whom we meet, who are looking, who are suffering, who don't know that they need a Savior, who are wondering who their Savior from sin is, we join our voices to theirs, and we also give witnesses, witness, and say to them, Here is Jesus. He is your Savior. Judgment has come against sin. He is forgiveness. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is near. Amen.